May 16th meeting of the Montpelier Roxbury uh, Board of School Directors. Are we directors? Directors. Okay. We used to be commissioners. <laughs> now we're directors. Uh, um, at 7.04, 7 7.03 p.m. Uh, first order of business, public comment. <laughs> Hearing none. Uh, move to second order of business, uh, consent agenda. We've added a number of new teacher hires to the consent agenda. All of them are on blue sheets for the board's consideration. There you go, and some came in there. Email today. Yes. Um, so I can make a motion. Yeah, motion to um, accept the consent agenda. I'll second. All those in, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Aye. Great. Um, Moving on to the policy number four, or item number four, which is the first reading of three new policies. Um, I know we don't have Steve or Bridget here. No. Um, so I'm going to walk you through? Yes. Okay. So, a couple things. First, before we start policy discussion, something I noticed today going through some of this stuff. Um, in general, I think some of our policies have inconsistent terms whether or not we're the Mont Montpelier Roxbury Public Schools or Montpelier Roxbury School District. Um, I think we'll need to make sure we're consistent as we're adopting these that we are one or the other. But I don't think you know, Brian or Grant or somebody else could chip in there on which one is what we need to have in there. But we have been inconsistent so far with whether or not we're Montpelier Roxbury School District or Montpelier Roxbury Public Schools in the policies. So. Okay. The first to keep an what eye on. What did we decide in the beginning? That it was Montpelier Roxbury Public, Public Schools. schools. Yes, yep. but we're somehow legally required to, to call be ourselves the Montpelier Roxbury School District, like in our. Yeah, it's a, in like official documents. In official documents. I think some of the stuff Grant's been going. I feel like I overheard Grant telling somebody that. Well, Grant and I had a conversation about it at the board retreat. Okay. Um, because there is this legal requirement that in some contexts we have to be referred to as the MRSD. But, but we had had a board conversation previously in which, and I think we voted, I think we took an action that we want to call ourselves publicly Montpelier yeah. Roxbury Public we School. Did. So we, we kind of going with a tuning system. Yep. So maybe it is a question for Brian as to whether it matters which name we use in the policy adoption, I doubt it. I doubt it would be good to know the answer to that, though, legally, because, yeah, yeah, yeah legally, legally it would be good to know. Um, and then whatever that answer is, we, yeah, put, it, in the we put in the policies. If it, you know, if it doesn't matter, then we call ourselves public schools, because that's what we want to call ourselves. And if we need to go with the school district term, then we do that. And I would say if it matters for some and not for the other, we go with the one that it matters for. Done and done. <coughs> Bless you. Yes, sir. So it's just a general question I had. But no, everything here under item number four is they're all the prior policies. So everything for the most part has been presented coming from the VSBA model policies, with the exception of C. Mm -hmm. But that's first readings. Um, and give you some context too for C. I had asked um, quite candidly with all the work that's been going on, forgotten that I had asked the tech committee to come up with something um, as one of their goals for this year. And so um, it just timed out that Mike Martin was able to present that to me just before. Um, and so I'd given Bridget a heads up about that. Um, so what you see for letter C is uh, homegrown from the tech committee here in Montpelier Public Schools. Um, one thing I noticed about that is um, under the second section policy, but at the educational mission, um, it refers to, mm -hmm. I believe, MPS mm -hmm. um, educational mission. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure if, yep. you know, it's. We can make that change. 
I, I'm, we don't have, I don't right. know if we have one yet. No, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Um, we could just have the MPS one as a placeholder right. until we have until it's, go down. Or maybe just even, I was going to say, suppose you just cut out the words educational mission and set it as a policy of the district to provide robust and reliable ICT resources in order to meet its student. Oh, you could just reworded. say, in order to meet its educational mission, period, mm -hmm. and leave off the specifics. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's yeah. good, mm -hmm. I think. That's good. Mm -hmm. begins legal pupils between the ages of 6 and 16, mm -hmm. defines, define legal how. I don't think we do refer to the students as legal pupils. So why is that different there? Let's see if there's a reference to that. I was going to say it would have to do with residency, but then residency is stated later in the policy. Like I said, when I read that, I found it kind of confusing on what classifies a legal pupil. It's not residents, that's the rest of the statement. I wonder if well mm. Mm. I yeah. wonder if that's what it's referring to. I can I can ask. Yeah, that's really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that was the only question or comment that I had on that policy. And as a sole policy committee person in attendance tonight, the policy committee, the three policies that we're looking at right now, has not gone through. So I can't present anything to you based on feedback from the rest of the committee for these policies. So. The committee hasn't. The committee, the committee, has the committee has hasn't discussed these three policies. And do we know how much latitude we have to make changes other than things like names and references to? Specific mission. Uh, some are allowed to change more than others. Yeah. I think some of that stuff is coming up later. I think Brian had dropped off something here. But I think from what I understand from conversations with Lori in the past, is we can add things to required policies, Correct. but it's we'd be really getting a can of worms if we start taking Correct. things out of pol okay. required policies. Especially and the VSBAs right. work with legal counsel. Right. Everything that is in the model policies coming from VSBA should be there for the district to comply with federal and state law. So That's adding important. is reasonable, tweaking mm -hmm. is reasonable, but pulling things out is mm -hmm. going to take some legal counsel to verify that it is okay, and okay. likely not. I don't see anything in the three policies I'm concerned about. Yeah, I don't either. There's some typos in the pupil privacy rights policy that needed to get fixed up. Is that the, is it not referred to as FERPA anymore? It's now DPRA? Uh, it says reference 20 USC 12. I'll see if we can pull that one up. I mean, that's how it's listed here from February 2005, Protection of Pupil Rights Amendment, 20 U.S.C., 1232H. And number one, it says this policy is required by the Federal Protection of Pupil Rights Amendment. Jim. Jim. Under the Pupil Privacy Rights, number six. Yes. Under what scenario do folks envision collecting or disclosing a or use of personal information collected from students for the purpose of marketing or selling that information. Why would we ever do that? I mean, I'm not saying no to it. I'm just asking, like, Why? what yeah. possible, what would that entail? Same question. So it, it, it is still called the Federal Educational Rights and Privacy Act. I don't know. 
consent, like that consent that comes home annually where you yes. sign off whether or not your yes, child can be used and yep. photograph can be used in yep. marketing materials. Correct. Yeah, I can. And you say yes or no. Mm -hmm. I just wanted but without, to that we that reference. We're about the same question. Number six. Yeah, but yeah. So what about on. selling that information? I'm talking about selling that information. Uh, who we, why, what, I'm just, I, I just am honestly asking for an example of where we would sell it's, student information. It's like the last um, policy conversation we had at Roxbury where there was a question as to why there were four exemptions to the firearm statute. Uh -huh. This is in federal law, literally listed as such. The collection, disclosure, or use of personal information. I mean, this is word for word. Number six mm -hmm. is word for word. If you look at the footnote on reference number I nine. I understand. So it's required to be listed in as such. Yeah. But uh, couldn't we just say as our policy that we will not be selling the information of students? The district's policy is not to sell information about students. I, I think this could, well, I don't, I'm just asking. Well, you know, it, this says that these are, that after we've accepted these, you have to write procedures. I understand. Our procedure could be, we will yeah. not sell any information well, to yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, here's, here's a situation in which that could come up. The, they have the kids use um, software all the time, right? And a lot of it's like online software, and they're using tons of different programs. And some of those programs do collect their information, like how they perform in this game or whatever okay um, but it wouldn't but but we have we have to make sure anytime that we're having kids engage in those things that if it is collecting information from them it's not collecting their information okay you know what I mean? where, where would we sell Identify. kids information I mean I do if the question is whether any of those companies potentially make money from the data that they collect on yeah, a lot, gets, a lot gets sold and packaged these days in odd ways, in unintentional well, ways. You could just imagine that a parent who's watching this or reading this online then all of a sudden reads that we're selling, that we're acknowledging that we're going to have to write a regulation that to allow the district to sell information about their kids. And we have to be able to defend that <coughs> and articulate well, I, I, why it's important. I think we defend it because it's what the federal law tells us. Exactly. It yeah. tells us we have to allow the selling of. It doesn't say it doesn't anything about allow. allowing it the sale. Yeah, it's just saying that in case to, it happens. Yes, that's yeah. right. And we can have a policy saying our policy is we don't allow the selling of kids' information. Right. That yeah. might yeah. Yeah. that might want get us into a situation where we're not able to use software that teachers want to be able to. Okay. Use. Well, then that's a good justification. We're just trying to flesh out right. that yeah. I'm not just voting on something. Like, so you it's might a also, footnote. Peter, look at the under responsible technology use. If you look at the, the second policy. page mm -hmm. in another policy, mm -hmm. I was reading um, two and three at the bottom. Read those two in relation <coughs> to this, just because mm -hmm. Michelle used that for example. Well, we, I mean, we've actually had questions about it from parents um, in the past about how because we use Google Classroom, you know, they want to know how, what access does Google have to identifying information about their child. And, and Google Classroom, because it's created for classroom use, is structured so that they don't have access to identifying information. But you know Google, right? Yeah. Any information that they can get in the process of people using their stuff, they're going to do stuff with. But we have to make sure that it's not identifying the students. My last comment, one of the reasons this is coming up as a concern for me is we have a federal, a, a U.S. Secretary of Education, who I'm not always convinced is looking out for students, right? Oh, Betsy yeah. DeVos has done things that I think are mm, not above um, board. And so just because there's a regulation in the federal law, it doesn't mean we should maybe just check off on it. But thank you for listening. Hear me out. <laughs> no, I mean, I think there, I think we do want to be careful in general though when we deviate from language that's straight out of the statute. Because sometimes we might think that we're complying with it or think that we're even strengthening it. But, um, you know, it can confuse future boards. Uh, it can also, 
perhaps unintentionally put us out of compliance if we don't do it right. At, at least with the required policies. Yeah. If, the, if there are other recommended ones that this board chooses to take on, or certainly if there are policies that this board wants to consider um, that, that are not required, I, I think that's where you have a lot of room for flexibility and, and tailoring. Um, but I think your point is well taken. So maybe this is one an interesting thing now that we're a new district. What will be the process for procedures? It's not, it's not generally something, you know, the administration does procedures, the board doesn't do procedures. But maybe, and I'm thinking of what Peter asked, so maybe we need, we need to ask to see the procedures for things we're worried about that would be handled. Well, I think we certainly need to flag them and ask questions. I think we should maybe be selective about it, though, because if we get right, that's stacks what I mean. like we this, we normally we're not see yeah. all the procedures, but maybe it's worth, if it's something we're worried about, worth yeah. checking out. Yeah, I just. The procedure on number six and can be that we're just not going to do it. Sure. And the easy one then before we get off of this policy, number three needs to be reworded to be correct. Arrangements of protect student privacy is not yeah. appropriate. Yeah. Minor details there. Yeah, it's. It will, yes. It has to anyway. I mean, this is only the first reading. And I'm curious, maybe again for a consistency question. So this policy only referred to parents, um, not guardians most of the time, if I remember checking the reading. Mm -hmm. um, is that consistent with most of the policies, that language regarding parents, guardians? Did anybody else catch that? Did it read? Yeah, no, I'm catching it too. Yeah. Also, there's under all statutes, do parents and guardians have the same rights? Okay, so like number four is one that caught my attention: the right of a parent to inspect any instructional material. That's so not number one as well, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Educational records says parents, guardians. Yeah. I think we should have parents, guardians to the extent. Possible unless there's a legal reason or not. To do it. So I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not the lawyer there, but it caught my attention. It seemed like we were using it a little bit differently than we normally do. Well, yeah. alcohol and drug just says parents, doesn't say guardians. Well, yeah. it sounds like we need to add guardian. So I'm not going to answer a question I should know the answer to, but in terms of second reading, how much change can occur in the policy committee between the first and second reading before we need to give it a first reading again before it becomes? So all, all the first reading is is a list that this is the first time it's been out. Yeah. If there are no changes, it can be worn for adoption at the next meeting. As many readings as you want to get it right. It so right. each reading is a change. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But as soon, because we talked about the number, right, is this correct? As soon as we didn't make any changes, then we could adopt the policy. Correct. There's no required number of readings. Right. There's just, it be read and be warned for adoption 10 days in advance of the warning.
for. So I don't have any more comments or things that I know this from the privacy policy. So yes, we are. Don't have this one. I'll be honest, caught me a little bit off guard this morning when I was reading it. Um, it's different from the VSBA model policy. I think the content is all the same, but the structure has changed some. Um, quite a bit different than the policy Montpelier had in the books already, and I unfortunately didn't correctly track down ours for Roxbury WSSU to compare it. Um, but I. Yeah. So, yeah, Mike Martin and the, the admin team. I'm not sure who else was involved in the first vetting of this policy and made some changes. Um, I'm assuming everything is okay, but I don't have anything to report back on why or what or how it compares to the model, model policy straight from the SBA. So the model policy is essentially a lot of do not, do not, do not. And so this was written in an attempt to express what we hope they would do. So, so shifting the language. From essentially trying to shift the language to be more this is how we expect that you're going to use our technology response. So usual policy governance, no, no, no. Right. Okay. So I didn't really have time to go through in detail both of the policies, the PSBA and this one, but it seemed like the content was all the same, but it was different. of the drafting of this? Uh, Mike Martin Mike? and the Technology Committee, which okay. includes representatives from all three buildings. Teachers, tech support specialists, library tech integrationists. Yeah, that's, that's what I, I remember mentioning that he, they wanted to cast it in a positive light. Mm -hmm. Any further questions about responsible technology use? <coughs> any further discussion on any of the policies up to first reading? So I'll make sure that all three of these are on for a second reading for the next time we all get together. Excellent. So moving on to item number five, the second reading of five policies, uh, tobacco prohibition, education records, student alcohol and drugs, limited English proficiency students, and firearms. Do you want to go through them one by one with discussion, or so do I make a motion? Todd? We need a motion to discuss. Or They're up for discussion. They're up for discussion. So, yeah. Right. So motion. Yes. Um, yes. I think I'd ask this question at the first reading for tobacco prohibition is whether or not this applied to marijuana. It did not apply to yeah, marijuana. It does not. It does not. So that would fall under the student alcohol and drugs policy. Correct. Okay, I just wanted yes. to clarify that. No, that's in my a good head. that's good clarification. Okay. All right. Yep. Good. Is, Thank you. Is there any needed or planned change when marijuana becomes legal? My guess is no because it is about that. not well not maybe. For minors. It's not, it's, it's not legal for seniors. minors, but Still. it's we do it's, have eighteen yeah. and we have teachers oh, on the grounds as well. well. Uh huh. Yeah. We have teachers on the ground. So. As far as I understand it, there is still no legal protection for having a controlled substance on school property. Right. Okay. As, unless it's under you're taking medication. Yeah. But um, as, I, and I have not read it, but it's, as I recall, the allowance for marijuana refers to one's personal residence. And so, absent more information to the contrary, it is still not going to be legal <coughs> whether you are, certainly you are not going to be legal as a student 
Um, and I would be incredibly surprised if you could legally, as an adult, <coughs> bring that onto a school campus. Okay. What, what and about this policy specifically talks about students, not adults. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in that case, it's illegal. We have a separate policy <coughs> on drug and alcohol for in the workplace for staff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. See if you have comment. Any discussion on tobacco provision beyond Becky's? I'm just going to um, say if we don't have any comment, then next time it can be under adoption of policies, correct? Yes, yes. in right. consent agenda. We just want to yeah. be yeah. clear. No, that's, I'm so, keeping track. All right, so that can go to adoption. Um, <coughs> education records. I'm good with that. Great. Uh, student alcohol and drugs. <coughs> Limited <coughs> proficiency students. <coughs> and firearms. Resolve that. Mm -hmm. the, uh, statutory requirements. Great. So we don't. We move on to six. We don't have any. Um, any action well, there's. Up, we'll this isn't <coughs> sub for adoption. Yeah. This isn't substantive, but um, there's still shall in the firearms one, and I'm not sure. And the uh, uh, implantation implantation section. Oh, under and expelled. Shall be expelled. Um, I. And then the superintendent shall refer to, and then on the back, the superintendent shall. Are we, we're changing all that to will, is that correct? I believe we are using will instead of shall, unless, Honestly, I don't know is that a statutory cut and paste? It, they, have, they have the same meaning. Um, I'm fine with that. I heard you raise that question last time, didn't you? Yeah, and she's not here tonight to have uh, that rationale. I don't know. Well, I mean, is there any harm in pushing it back another meeting just to make sure we have the correct answer? No. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I mean, this policy wouldn't preclude the district from having a shooting club or activities off, off campus. This is on campus. Right, it's all mm -hmm. on campus. So. Oh, there's a good question. Um, well, campus is usually considered to go to mean any Where school activity. Where the school yeah. goes. Um, so but this does say, for example, any student who brings a firearm to school and who possesses a firearm at school. Right, the theme is definitely on school, but I had wondered about the school that I grew up in. We had shooting sports clubs that we would leave campus and go after school hours. Um, and I wasn't sure if that would change or be allowed with this policy. Well, we do, our Nordic team, I think, participated in some um, biathlon stuff mm -hmm. this winter. Um, hmm. Maybe we'll, we're checking out legal things if we check out that. Yeah. Just to find out. No, that's a good question, because if you, if you define campus broadly like that. Anything that's happening related to the school. Yeah, well, and possess, you know, possess arguably means that they have one in their, possess, yeah. Even if they didn't bring it, and even if it was provided to them as part of an activity. Yeah, we might want to just have a section that says, if they're participating in a school sponsor, Can I put in the spot, Lori? This has to be almost identical to Northfield's policy right now for firearms, right? And they're able to participate in that um, rifle, rifle, rifle team. Mm -hmm. And then there's ROTC. And they do. So there is some flexibility or it's... Private student population. Or people right. have never asked them. Well, I guess 
guess the, the question is like, is there flexibility or people just not follow? Yeah, I mean, I would have the type of thing where if someone said, you know, we want to shut down that's the biathlon what, that's team, the yeah. none of these students can, can have guns. Um, they they might have a pretty good argument it, that, yeah. <laughs> that they could. So yeah, well, shells, wills, and, and clubs off campus. Physical campus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe even not. Yeah, maybe not even clubs. Just, just activity. 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 Yeah. Uh, approved board approved activity. Does that have to be board approved? Well, I hope do we, not. Do we approve we activity? No. 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 no, you don't. Okay, so what, yeah. how is a school uh, sponsored? How does it get approved? Is school, school sponsored, sponsored and appropriately, sponsored. And appropriately okay. supervised or something? Sponsored. School sponsored. Yeah. yeah. Because if there is a club or a sport, they're required to have an adult um, moderator. Yeah. So if I heard this correctly, tobacco prohibition, education records, student alcohol and drugs, and limited English proficiency students will be warned for adoption yes. on June 6th. Yep. We'll add firearms to, as a third reading along with the second reading for student attendance, pupil privacy, and responsible computer, internet, and network use. Sounds good. Great. Okay. We are squared away there. A few questions. Thank you all. Excellent. So we are basically <coughs> out of schedule. Um, <laughs> item six, update on superintendent search. That would be Tina and Lisa. Yes, Tina, that's actually officially part of your board for your search committee chair duties, isn't it, to report out? Although, Lisa, please feel free to. Absolutely. Check on me. Okay. Um, my report is we have a great search committee. It's taking a lot of time and energy <laughs> on everybody's part, so we really appreciate the search committee. Um, we added another interview day. The interviews will happen on the 21st and the 22nd. And I Do thought- Do we need to approve the extra interview day? I don't know. Should we just for- Sure, I'm getting- Adults and suspenders? Okay, because then we have to approve the- The board is doing it. Huh? It needs to be warned, yeah. but do we have to do any approval? Because we had we to approve moving it from 12 to 13 and some other change. <coughs> And we did originally approve the dates. Huh? I think we did originally approve the meeting yeah. dates. Let's do it just to do it. Make sure. Um, so is that an indication that we have candidates that we like? It's an indication that we have a lot of people to look at. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that's better than... A lot of people made uh, it through the screening tool. Yes. Um, so while you're talking about approvals, we have two sets of minutes, which Lisa nicely. Three sets, three I sets believe. Oh, oh you're right. Three sets of minutes that that need board approval. Okay. And there's not much to them, right? Because most of our time is spent in executive session. Right. Um. And uh, speaking of uh, maybe warning, go ahead. I was going to say, can we approve the other meeting since they weren't? No. Uh -huh. They would have to be. Who, who has those minutes? We all have. Heather them. brought copies for everybody tonight. If the search committee is approving them as you go, does the board need to approve them as well? No. Oh, okay. No, you, right, right. The right. committee can approve its own minutes. Right, because we give, the committee has a charge to operate you, as you the told entity, to do so, this, right. yeah. Oh, great, great. Okay, thank you. Um, so, I thought I'd review, since we have, ha are having a few extra board meetings, <laughs> that we would um, be clarify when those were. So Tuesday, May 22nd, we're meeting. Are we? Um, Lisa and I have down that we talked about it and we were meeting to plan for the June 4th um, visits by candidates. 
And Mike, I think and that I, was something I Mike introduced know. at the meeting when he yeah. came and presented to okay, us. So I had that written down. That too. a number of school board However, folks heard at there's from. There's a high school concert that evening. I know. We talked about it. There are people yeah. on this committee on the high school concert. The 7 o'clock um, on the 22nd, the logistics for yeah. so the 4th. And that was on a Tuesday I, night. It occurred to me that we, I think it was Bridget last time that was saying, could we please clarify when mm -hmm. we're having meetings? And this did not come up, I don't think. Yeah, I, oh. if the 22nd meeting came up, it just has escaped me, but I, I would, it makes sense. Well, if, I guess I'm saying, if not on the 22nd, when would you do it before? June. I don't know if we can. And the other thing about that is we talked with Mike, um, and he's, he can be there that he night. There and he said that the screening committee will actually um, have a general outline for us okay. for what the fourth would look like. We're deeming and so that it's very short meeting. Yes, we expect to be relatively short, but. Um, and that we wouldn't necessarily be doing all of the legwork, just that we would be kind of taking a look and maybe delegating different yeah. folks to be different places and figuring out when the interviews can happen. And, and the idea on the 22nd being that the screening committee would be there and you could just kind of flow on to the other. Oh, well, on the 22nd, we're meeting all day. So, well, we, but it doesn't have to be that day that the board meets. Right, but the it board, could be the as a matter of fact, we discussed we had to be done by 7 o'clock if the board was meeting, because that was our yeah. understanding. But it would have to be done sometime to be ready for June 4th. So what's the board? what's the board's pleasure? I'm good to the 22nd, the, I could do the 23rd as well, I could, that week is actually pretty good for me, the following week, that's good. It's, it's, as Michelle pointed out, that's a deadly week for any parent of a child. Not only is it the high school concert, the next day is the art show, which you just got a little card yes. for. Yes, um, which is happening at 17. Yeah, it's too bad, I guess we don't know yet how late um, it will actually be necessary for us to go. Because would it help if it's a very short meeting to make it early? It doesn't work for me. I'm not sure we can because of our interviews. Well, that's what I was saying. We don't know what exactly what's happening. But right. What time is the concert? I'm just trying to find that out. I have it in my calendar at 6, at six o'clock, but I don't know that that's real. Uh huh. I have it written down, but no. But no time. Seven o'clock. Seven. And the art show is at six thirty. Yeah, on Wednesday. It's we could meet at five thirty or six on Wednesday, and we still make the art show. Uh -huh. I'm not sure where if if this bu whole building will be. No, it's, so no, it's, it's in, in the, the gym. gym. Oh, it's not. Oh, yeah. okay. It's and quite the show you should come. Yeah. So we could use the space. Yeah. Um, go see well, the, the, qu the question would be we could ask Mike if he could come or he could get us ready so Lisa and I could do it. Right, right. So, and I guess Mike's preference would be probably the 22nd, too, so. Somehow, I thought that came out in the discussion and the board picked it, but I can't imagine why we would. We did and on that first night first when over spring break. a couple uh, people were absent. When we didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. yes. so, yeah. Well, maybe we should check with availability of people. If we did it on Wednesday before the art show, how does that strike the rest of the people on the board? Time are we saying? Five? 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 Six? Five thirty? Five thirty. It won't take that long, will it? I think, uh, I, Tina, I remember we were talking with Mike and he said something about um, not expecting it to be too short either. Do you know what I mean? So I think maybe an hour is probably a good. 
he was cushioned about your discussion of what we'll have to say and how long you would discuss it, I think. Um, so if it was 5.30, maybe I think something happened. That's an hour. Hopefully it wouldn't take more than an hour. Well, and you don't have to get more. to the art show the minute that it starts. Right. Yeah, I was right. going to say, it's a little it's more than like an hour. It's concert. flexible. That's yeah. a good point. Mm -hmm. So, actually, in my, if I'm thinking of Ryan, how about six instead of is that better? Not much. Necessarily. It's going to be some shuffling of the schedule, and there's a chance kids will be in tow, but figure something out. Feels like Teddy might be in Because Michelle's right. The art show is not like a concert. Right. So. Uh, although there is a concert during the art show. That is true. <laughs> but it's unlikely it will be at 6 30. Yeah. So we're gonna check with Mike for the Wednesday, confirm that he can come and then move forward with that. Is that well, what we're saying? I think <coughs> it's the pleasure of the board because I'm betting we will have what we're doing done with by then. So probably if he can't come, Lisa and I can present it. Is that your thought? Yeah, sure. Can anyone not attend on Wednesday? Yeah, I don't, Bridge is going to be back in town, right? I don't know if, I don't think Steve is going to be back in town. He's told me he's out of town for two weeks. Yeah. And it's, so. So no matter game. which of those days he's not going to be. Yeah. Though I can't say for sure, though, because I'm not sure when he actually left. It depends whether this is week one or week right, two. Right, I actually don't know which it's one he week left. week one. So. He's, uh, he was at the farmer's market on Saturday. Yeah, so it's not going to be here regardless. Yeah. I'm good with the 20th. Third at six. Yep. It's okay. <coughs> if the, um, the, cons the spring concert was set Tuesday, not uh, Wednesday, by the way, Michelle. Right, but we were we began by discussing Tuesday. That's why it came oh, up. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And the, I, the um, jazz band plays during the art show. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not exactly a concert, but it's live music. It's mm -hmm. and it's good. Yeah. Um, so, so that we're clear, so that's a board meeting on the 23rd, and then there'll be a board meeting on um, well, June 4th. Yeah, and then right. figure out yeah, how exactly is that envisioned to work? That's going to be the well, that's kind of what we're talking about on the 23rd. Yeah, that's going to be. <laughs> yeah. But the, get a, the other issue a trailer? is that, <laughs> sure, <laughs> to some degree you can. The, the candidates would be here probably for the day. Yeah. And culminating in them talking with you, and if there were a couple of them, you'd be here a while. And it's the only thing on the agenda for that. Yeah. Aren't we still? Up to three. Uh, up up to, three. to three. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, I think Mike said that it's likely that each uh, candidate that the screening committee names or finalist um, would have a liaison who would take them to every school that day. Mm -hmm. um, it's Next. not necessarily a board member, though. I think he said no. it could be yeah. it's somebody from the somebody. screening committee. Yeah. And yeah. That that would happen prior to coming to the board, so the board right. does is not directly dealing with that. So and that there would be some community. And the board convenes at night and 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 meets with. How long sorry. that would take depends on like how many candidates there are. Well, and we talked also about having a robust opportunity for public engagement with the candidates, with the finalists, yes. and so the there's a question. Um, as to whether that would happen prior to the board meeting, like would we have a public forum prior to the board meeting, or would that happen as part of the board meeting? We discussed meeting? putting some of that during the day, so that okay. there would be opportunities for the community to meet the candidates during the day. Um, we could also build in, just prior to the board meeting, um, 
something, but also the board meetings open, right? Right. Yeah. And I was just wondering whether we wanted to create a special time for that and promote it. Well, I think I it was our intention to promote here. the ones during the day. I think it's your call on whether you feel if we had one or two during the day, would you also want one following more in the evening? Yes. Okay. So, uh, or at least, I, at least we could kind of, you know, wrap it into what we're doing. Maybe have when, when we talk to the candidates, have part of that time for a little back and forth with whoever shows up. I guess I would say to you, it's it, gonna be long. <laughs> well, it could be. So, yes. it, you know, um, if the community's here, are going to ask questions, and the board's going to ask questions. Do you want to separate that yeah, in some way? So. I would. I would have the board part, and then a yeah, you know, potential two minutes for <coughs> interaction with the community members. Oh, and we have done a thing before where we ask the public to write their question on an index card and give them. Oh, we could do that. And then the board can ask for the questions. That might be. Good for that well, part, especially if they have time during the day when they can ask questions yeah. directly. Um, <coughs> and How about if I, if we um, report this back to Mike and he might have suggestions too of a good way to do it? Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. And did he discuss about how the community forums would look? Would <coughs> all candidates be in a room together so people could come for an hour and? Hear the different answers, or would probably it be the candidates would be separate. separate. Uh -huh. So if someone wanted to hear from all of them, they'd have to. He, I think he offered up for the long haul. either of those. Yeah, that sometimes it's done where Separately. the candidates are all in the same big room, and community teachers, students can all be there and go from one to the next during period of an hour or something like that. And that sometimes it's done where they're separate times and locations, separate times, I guess. Yeah, I mean, because I uh, guess I've never seen it just done all together, but it doesn't mean it couldn't be. Yeah, I mean, from the candidate's perspective, they probably would not want to be all together. But from the public's perspective, it's convenient. It's, right. It's a lot more convenient. Right. And then you get some people who saw one person but not the other two, and. I know they wouldn't love it, but yeah, that certainly seems uncomfortable. Let's, yeah, let's ask Mike. Let's ask Mike um, how he feels it's best, knowing he he is aware that we're very concerned about the community being able to give input into yeah. this, and we have discussed it. So, um, let's or we could do a that. thing where we're pretty disciplined about it's going to be an hour, and one person's going to go up for twenty minutes, and then. Take the cane and mm -hmm. in twenty minutes, and then, you know, and really have like so. You can see all three in an hour, and it would be a dependable hour, but I they won't be all really. sitting there together. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend a twenty-minute conversation. No. I, I think She's you're, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I think Quite you're going to want more than twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. I mean, you know, you could. Well, that's what concerns me well, about doing both. Public and board questions. Yeah. Um, if the board has a good number of questions, mm -hmm. and then you open it to the community, mm -hmm. that's not because I want to cut off the community. I'm mm -hmm. just thinking of the length of time. So mm -hmm. you might want to separate that the community gets to talk to them and the board. So then the other thing to think about, and we've been yeah. asked to think about it, is how would you get feedback back from the community once they have talked? To them? Right. Well, they're always welcome to. Well, yeah, well, we can encourage them to call email. We can also encourage them to. Oh, do we have to make the decision, decision that night? You don't have to. Yeah. Well, it's going back to my 20 minute suggestion, I wasn't saying that would be the only opportunity, but I'm saying maybe have, you know, each candidate has an hour, so people who really want to, you know, dig in, but then have a session where for people who don't have three hours to spend and want to see all three candidates, there's going to be 
kind of like a, a quick, you know, 20 minutes each. You can see them all, and then they'll each have a separate community meeting. Too you know, something longer. that I haven't thought of is I wonder if there's a way of videoing. A lot of people watch the board members, the board meetings yeah. on Orca. Orca. Maybe there's a way of videoing each of them in some specific thing and running it prior to that also. How about no. the search committee will talk about and get back with you? Yeah, them. definitely. With a plan that, and that's, so that's what we're talking about well, and on I, the 23rd. Yeah, I think we do want to make the decision as quickly as possible because we do need to hire someone and have them start just minutes later. <laughs> uh, yes. Right, but the 23rd <coughs> is next week. Yes. You're talking about the hiring decision? Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. the hiring decision. Well, you can hire that right. Yes. Right, but I, if, if I, was just start, I was starting down the road of envisioning a process in which we hear from everybody, the community gets to ask questions, we tell community members, hey, watch the recording on ORCA three days from now, give us your feedback, we're going to make no, no, this no. decision. This has been so quick already yeah. that that can't happen. So no, okay. the okay. fact of the 23rd, then you have a week and a half between right. there and when the candidates come. Right. So we should really be prepared. We should really be prepared to have a system which produces a superintendent on the fourth. Which means if we're going to get feedback from the community, we need to set up a way of doing that. Yeah. Well, we should, I wonder if we could have, like, be, yeah, I have a question. Yeah. I'm concerned that it's going to get unstructured and unwieldy very quickly. And in hiring, in group hiring pro processes, it helps if you have a, a list of, say, five questions from which you'll choose three yes. so that you have a fair understanding and, and equitable treatment of the candidates. And you can do that on the public forum as well. Have the people that are coming forward from the public also be able to choose, say, from a list of five questions within which three people can ask the question or, or however it is. Otherwise, you're really not going to have an equitable interviewing process. Right. Can I follow up a little bit on that, thinking we're talking about the community in very broad terms, yeah. mm -hmm. but how likely are we to get the whole community to show up that night? And we'll have it's not very likely we'll we're going to get... We'll have a lot of people. Yeah. But yeah. Is, it the, is it a general representation of the community or is it a subset of the community? So the, right. Yeah. So the, yeah. the concern is that we'll have a bunch of folks on the one end of the spectrum, one way or the other, mm -hmm. show up, and if that's all the feedback we get from the community, it's not going to be that helpful overall for us to make an informed decision. It is um, still our decision. To yeah, make absolutely. It, I think we, but thinking about, about this conversation about what we're mm -hmm. what we're expecting from the community, right? It's like we have to be realistic about what we're setting up in terms of what we're going to get for feedback, if anything. Um, and whether or not it's actually going to be useful in terms of informing us as a board on the community overall. Yeah, Lisa? Um, Mike did mention some kind of system for community feedback prior to when the board interviews the yes. candidates. Okay. So um, I think there's something more specific that we will bring on the 23rd about that. And I think... Maybe even send it out before so that we know what it looks like. Yeah. If that would be helpful. Well, and, yeah. and I think the, the issue is you wouldn't want to ask people to come and then not ask them what they thought, no matter who yeah. they were that came. Right. And that was what we was tr were trying to figure out. If right. they're coming, how to, do we, how do we, how do we right. get back that? Yep. No, and people, I think no that's matter what the representation is. That's right. fair. And we have and I members think on the search committee. And, right. Um, and I think, I, fi I feel confident that on the 23rd, we'll come back with some sort of a one year plan. Good. Good. What do you think? I think so. Yeah. yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Um, in that end, and the, the next thing on my list is where <laughs> Becky was going, I would like the people on the board to think about a question they would like to ask during this interview process, and please send them to me okay. so okay. that I could incorporate them in so that we're fairly structured. 
when we ask our questions during the interview. Yeah, so kind of what I'm hearing, and you know, I had a question bring to Mike, uh, you, know, in, you know, community feedback, how do we get that? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we structure the community engagement so it's both, so people feel that they have adequate time with the candidates, but we also don't leave people in a position where, you know, they have to take three and a half, four hours out of the day to feel that they got to see all all assuming we have three candidates, three candidates. Um, and then an orderly fair process for questioning, which I think is, and I think Becky, that's gonna be a little bit, I think for us that's gonna be easy to achieve. I think telling the public what they can and cannot ask is not gonna go over well. I just don't know how to have an equitable interviewing process without some sort of yeah. Right. I hope Mike, I'm sure Mike's done this before. Yeah. yeah. He'll have so some plan on that. for how to manage mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. community yeah. input. Yes. Yeah. But remember, yeah, there are good. people who are going to want to ask their own questions in this community. So. Especially <laughs> this community. Yes. That's right. And they're, they're not technically, they're not interviewing the people. Right. No, yeah. it's, 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 it's not. It's community. community. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's but, a caveat. They, they would, I think what we would have to do. And if, I think what we would have to do is probably the index card thing so that it's the board that's managing the questions. And we would yeah. have to give all of the finalists the opportunity to answer each question. Yeah. And that's what would make it equitable. So that we don't have individuals from the public addressing specific questions to specific candidates. But here we have a question from the public. Could each of you please respond? That's well, a good idea. and that's in all good. fairness, there may be different yeah. questions we're going to want to ask different candidates, like depending upon their background. Yeah, you know, if yeah. we have the background, you know, if we have an out-of-state candidate, there might be a question about, you know, what do you know about Vermont and why do you want to? Do you know what you're kind of getting to? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, sure. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Sounds like you've covered that ground well. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you both of you for doing this. That is a big time commitment, um, and we appreciate it. I can say I think we're very impressed with the person you hired to do the search. The mic? Yes. The mic's doing mm -hmm. a good job. Good. Excellent. It's good to know. Um, so moving on to item seven, which I think we may have to, uh, unfortunately neither Bridget nor Steve are here and they They're have been working, working on Pretty major aspects of this. So it's funny, Jim. I had emailed Bridget because I thought at 10 o'clock this morning. I know, so I was I missed the last policy committee meeting because I was in interviews for the CNT yeah. director position, on which they were discussing those two items. Oh. And it's like, well, what's the plan tonight? They weren't in the packet. Are you bringing handouts? Are you planning on presenting something? What? How was the structure for oh, this discussion? Um, so I actually don't know. She didn't get back to me, so I'm not sure. Yeah, Steve's indication was we should punt on a lot of this. I know we've done this <coughs> previously. I, I do kind of want to set up, I think, what we need to do. And obviously, you know, this is, a, this, is a, this is a big piece. I think this would be our biggest piece if we didn't have other pieces that, that we're also focusing on. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're getting those other ones squared away quickly. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of want to use a little time to remind people you know, about the, the day we spent with, with Steve Dale and kind of, I think, where we need to uh, to go and to, you know, go starting this summer. Uh, mission and vision and ends, and that's another community process. Uh, so I think early on, and I think we can work with the new superintendent on this, get a public process, engagement process to get those two things going. Uh, and then I was, we could go about, I think it would be good to have a series of discussions about board governance and board structure and uh, board decorum, et cetera. Uh, and maybe either build that into some of our meetings over the summer where we just kind of, you know, take part of a meeting and, and do a topic we might want to consider getting some sort of a facilitator uh, to help with that. Uh, and just, 
you know, iron out the three or four things we need to go through and really make that kind of our summer project and maybe wrap it up with a retreat in August where we finalize a lot of the work and get, get those pieces in place, uh, you know, going, you know, going into the, the 2019 or 2018-2019 school year. Um, so that's kind of my overall thought. I think we need to probably really set that timetable um, either like the 7th or the 20th of June. Um, and it might be a really good thing to be ready to pounce on after you know, the 4th or 5th when we, we make a new hire and really bring the new superintendent into that process. Um, so that's kind of my high level thought on that. Um, you know, given that we can't talk about some of these items that that's, are in Stephen Bridget's head and uh, we'll need to, to talk about later. So I don't know if you can. I like the idea of having devoted time again to run through this stuff and get, get it taken care of. But I'm a little bit concerned pushing it off all the way into the summer because we're talking about the budgeting policy, annual planning policy. We'll be well into We're not talking about this until August, maybe getting it confirmed and um, voted on in September. Like we're into the budget cycle already. Yeah, no, I agree. I think there's. I think we're going to have to prioritize mm -hmm. and hope, you know, hopefully get I think the... Yeah, the, the two top items here are probably things we should try to wrap up in June or early July if we can. Uh, and then we can work on some other things like really refining what our governance structure looks like, what, you know, governance by policy instead of policy right. governance means. Right. Uh, you know, things like, you know, board decorum, um, you know, et cetera. Another big piece we're going to talk about next is a uh, superintendent evaluation process. I think that's you know, budget process, superintendent evaluation process, and annual, uh, just our annual planning um, are things we really need to... Powers for yeah. Yeah. yeah, need to get moving on soon. Um, you know, and, and the mission, it ends, but I think that's something we can so we're not going to talk about these policies now, right? Is what you're saying? Yes, because we, we we just can't have a meaningful discussion without. Okay. without I missed the last yeah. round of drafts. Um, the annual planning policy, I can just give you a rough update. It's still pretty rough. Um, I think we were really hoping to have a broad discussion before Steve spent any more time on that one, just because. <coughs> It could go a bunch of different directions. Um, the budget policy has been, I think, a little bit more refined. It's gone through a couple of drafts. It's had some feedback from administrators. Um, so the budget policy draft is probably in a much more better position to have a meaningful conversation rather than the annual planning policy. But again, I miss, I wasn't at the last planning committee, the policy committee, so I can't speak with exactly what Stephen Bridget had said, so. May I ask you a question about the budgeting policy? What's that? It, you've got the action of the board will be to approve an overall percent change in the district's education spending. If, uh, spending is, education spending is defined as the total budget plus local revenues. My question about this policy, I was just asking this so you could have, uh, uh, talk about it, was in the process, where is that? Um, and, and the reason I'm asking is I often feel like it's. So is this the? It's with, it's the next page after the code of conduct. It's stapled with it. So it did get so the budget policy did get in. Yeah. Okay. I had a question about that too, so I'm not. sure. I have it. Okay. I, yes. I was going I don't to, know how I, Steve. I'll right. just express that um, I've always found it hard to give anybody a, a, a percentage or anything right. until I know what you need. So if the, I'm not opposed to doing that, but if the, you had a whole bunch of, a list of things that would happen, if that happened ahead of time, and then you said to the board, given these factors, what do you think? Yeah. I'd be better able. Right, because technically the board approves a dollar amount budget. Right. In, the we end. Make, in the end, right. we make that motion. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I have made 
the last draft that I had seen on this, I had made that same note to ask Steve. Okay. So I'm not sure how they fleshed that out. Or, push right, it right, but thanks. Yes. It would be great to have a timeline in this policy yes. also. So I think that's going to, that goes into the angle planning policy the planning also. Yeah. So there's okay. some overlap between the two, yeah. and it's been discussed and kind of how to make those to not be redundant. And, and, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's definitely to make sure that the, essentially the board input can be received in a timely fashion, so it's not, right. here's the proposed budget now. We really, the board would really benefit from um, procedures. I know this isn't policy, but I think we would really benefit from procedures. And a timeline would help us attached. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And I, I also agree we need that well before September. We're already, we're already midway through May. Along. Yes. Okay. Um, so, are we uh, ready to move on to eight? So, one of uh, one of the most important things I think the board function is is superintendent evaluation, and I know we've had somewhat of a at least the Montpelier. Uh, school board has had, you know, kind of an up and down history with that, just in terms of actually having the process in place, and my understanding is somebody is actually really, really doing it much at all. Um, I think it's really important we have a clear and consistent and effective superintendent evaluation process that starts with the new superintendent, um, and that perhaps we can at least at the initial stages help the new superintendent build. Um, but kind of the major things that I have on my list for, well, well, here's kind of my, here's some thoughts I have on that. One, I think, I think we need an evaluation committee, uh, that's tasked with putting a timetable together, making sure the evaluation happens, making sure all the pieces come together, um, and, and just, getting that going. Um, so, you know, that means, you know, a committee and then a set process for that committee to follow. Uh, Again, procedures with timelines. Procedures yes. with, with timelines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think part of that is a process that would involve the whole board plus the superintendent of setting goals. That the superintendent would set goals, the board would also set goals for the superintendent, there would come yeah, you know, there would be a coming together and agreement of what what those goals actually are. So there's common agreed upon goals between the board and the superintendent about what what the goals for the year are. Mm -hmm. And that would then be evaluated with some things I think we need to put together pretty soon, which is a job description. So just kind of what are the basic expectations? There's the yearly goals of the superintendent, but then just as a base level function what what do we expect of the superintendent just in terms of doing her or his job? Essential functions. Essential functions. Um, and then also, you know, that can also, for, you know, for the new superintendent, I think that should be married to an entry plan, which is something we should also get together. And, you know, part of, part of that would also be in the contract. You know, what are they contractually obligated to do? What's their job description tell them to do? And then for the initial first year, you know, what's the entry plan? And then beyond that, it would be, be the goals. Uh, so just get clear expectations about what we're measuring, what we expect, uh, make sure those are up front. Uh, you know, and then as, as the year progresses, I'd like a pretty aggressive review process, or at least thorough, mm -hmm. aggressive is the wrong word, but thorough and comprehensive review process. Um, that the evaluation committee would be in charge of moving along, but obviously the board would be informed along the way. And kind of, you know, the three main pieces that I would love to see as kind of part of like a 360 review are, I think there should be one or two opportunities during the year where the evaluation committee meets one-on-one, -on -one, and I've done this in nonprofit boards, it's very effective, with the leadership team and just gets feedback okay. on how things are going. And I think that does a couple things. It, it gives the board a lot of 
information. And I, it, you know, the board is hearing from the superintendent. I think it's good to hear from people immediately supervised from the superintendent what's working, what's not. I think it creates a level of transparency and honesty and gives the board different perspectives. I also think it gives planned and meaningful opportunities for the immediate leadership to team to be heard by the board in a way that will make them feel that the board is listening to them and they're, you know, there's a check-in point and the check-in point is very defined. Um, the other piece is, which I think we're doing and we're getting up is, you know, kind of non-leadership team like SurveyMonkey where we, we send a survey out and we get comments back in. Yeah. And then the third piece, which I think is trickier, but what I st still would like to do, is some sort of community input and parental input, um, which I think we'd have to take with a bit of grain of salt because it's gonna be probably the most self-selecting mm -hmm. of the three processes. You know, There's gonna be a lot of people who aren't gonna take the time for it. There are gonna be people who are always gonna take the time for it. Uh, but I think it's still valuable and I think it's good to have the community given an opportunity. And then, you know, use that information, you know, look at the goals, look at the job description, look at the entry plan, and, you know, sit down and just have a really constructive conversation, uh, you know, at the end of the year with the superintendent about how she's doing or how he's doing. Uh, and then we start the process over and just make sure that that, you know, think about that as that and the budget being really the two most important things the board does. Makes sense. So, and then following up with that, we have, we have Nancy Reed has volunteered to help at least get a process in place and get some of these things going over the next month or so. Um, with, you know, volunteers from this board, if they're willing. Uh, Nancy's on the other board, she'd be serving as a community member, which I think we could do. Um, there's a little bit of awkwardness there. Uh, I don't know how people feel about it. I also, they, the plus side is she's got the time and she has a strong education background. Um, so I just wanted to throw that offer out there, get people's thoughts. Uh, Otherwise, one of us could, could step up and do that. I know session's over, Peter. <laughs> I think, I mean, the committee would need a charge and it would need to have defined membership. And exactly. Mm -hmm. right. Jim, do you know, I feel like at some point on the BSBA website, I've seen one of the services they provide is, is super superintendent evaluation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any conversations with them to see? I've had some, and it's definitely something they'd be willing to help us on. So we can we can look to it quickly. It, I, I can look to it more. I I do think we, I would like to at least be pretty. Uh, I don't want to say deep into the process, but I would like this to look. I would like this to go hand in hand with the new superintendent hire. So it looks like. Not that it just looks like, but it is that you know with the new superintendent we're going to bring a consistent process, and it's not going to come in and realize af things yeah after sure. you know she or he has been established for a while. So it's kind of like whoa, wait a second, what is this? Uh, I want the expectation to be pretty clear that we're going to have the entry plan. And yeah, we're going to have an entry plan. We're going to have a, a comprehensive evaluation process. We're going to stick to it. Uh, it's you know it's. Not about, you know, we're not imposing something on you after you've been here a while. This is how we expect, you know, our relationship to be. Jim. Yeah. Um, so having just heard about this, and this isn't against Nancy or anything, for some reason it's not clicking in my head that Nancy, that it, might, it might seem weird to have someone from another board helping guide. Yeah. I, don't, I just want a moment to think about it. We, do we have to okay it now? No, we definitely don't. I just okay. wanted to throw so it out there. We can talk about can it. Can we have, before any action state, great? Yeah. Me. I don't I, know. It just doesn't seem right to me. And it probably is okay, but it seems weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. Thank I just you. wanted to, I, you know, Nancy volunteered. I wanted sure. to and I throw it out that. there. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, she brought it up. She says, sure. if, you know, if the board feels it's weird, yep. she's not okay. going to be, you know, yeah. 
put well, off at all. It certainly needs people from this board on it. Anyway. It definitely needs people from this mean, board. On. This board, the, not this board. This board, yeah. yes, this board. That's the difference. This yeah. board would need to create a charge and define sure. the membership, yes. and then if Nancy were to represent, to be on it as a community member, we would be right. willing to seek yeah. But yeah. will we have community members on a superintendent evaluation committee is the question. Well, I don't think it would be a superintendent evaluation It would be a committee to set our process and help with some of these documents. And then, uh, and then the... Sure. This would be, uh, maybe this is a committee to help write this write then the charge have another committee uh, that will okay. carry it out which so, would yeah. be consistent people on this board yeah. and no one else on yeah committee. or yeah. we could yeah. skip that stuff all together and just yeah. go straight to the superintendent evaluation just let's other. just think about that yeah for a minute. so that, i just i just want to throw this out there thank you i appreciate it's, it's, that uh, this is yeah. this is ideas but i i do want us as we move into june right i mean i'd like to have you know this is not something i'd like to put off Till like August or July or you know September. I'd, I'd like to have. It starts 30 days in if you're yeah. going to do it right. Yes. If I can just say that. If I can just say we're making this real complicated. And there are established procedures, pre established procedures. One thing that I started. I was going to drop my Is that right? Okay, so guys, we're having a lot of. Side conversations. Yeah, it's a good thing. I was saying that there are established procedures in place to do a good job at this. We're making it really, really complicated when I don't think it really, really yeah. is. And having a new person come into a position like this and getting them embedded part of the team, part of the district, has to start immediately, actually. And when you bring someone on board like this, as you were calling it, the entry process, 30, 60, 90, then quarterly, then annual, I mean, the, almost like when you're a full year out, it's almost too late to do an evaluation. It needs to be a continuous yeah. process. And I think we're making it really, really complicated when I'm not sure sure it should be. Yeah. How it's would you propose we get there? Well, um, we, we're handicapped that we have not done a good job of this so far. Right. Yeah. Um, perhaps the BSBA actually has a process in place, or I have timelines in place for my own work. There are established procedures in how it is you bring on a new hospital administrator or, or, or a new right. school superintendent. It's not like, we're, we're not creating the wheel here. I yeah. right. just put it that we way. We just, right, but so we just haven't done it. So, so we somehow, haven't done it. So we are handicapped. Somebody has to do it, is what we're saying. I don't know why we can't adopt it from another school district that's already done it. Right. There has to be places out there. I know, in a separate search I did, there are superintendent job descriptions out there that are easily brought in and as a draft and can be edited and updated. I mean, well, and can the policy committee just, I mean, to me, the, the uh, when we were talking about it earlier, um, the, and Brian quite rightly observed that the budget process, the planning process, and the superintendent evaluation process are like our three yeah. main mm -hmm. jobs and they mm -hmm. kind of all go together. I think, I think the policy committee is under a lot of. I stress. will already yeah. know they are, but maybe they need more help or something. But that, that seems like, a, and maybe if Becky has resources at hand to offer them, that would help. I think I, can help. I also think that Nancy had talked to Mike and um, several other people for samples of a process so that I'm sure she'd be glad to give whoever's yeah. going to look at it. So you don't start from zero. Yeah, yeah. no, and that's, I agree we don't start from zero, mm -hmm. but um, we need, we need some people to kind of come up with ideas and I do that research and come up, yeah, mm -hmm. and come up with that process and, yeah. you know, come up with, with the job description, come up with the entry plan. I mean, I think it's all out there, but somebody needs to or you like dropping Let's go find it. No, I'm not going to get it. I'm just saying. Um, maybe, maybe I was thinking about the fact, so now we're going to meet again on the 23rd because we love meeting so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you think about all this, and on the 23rd we're more, we we develop a plan, whatever the plan yeah. is, but we say, here's how we'll do it and here's who will do it. Because otherwise you're going to be into June and you won't have started. Yeah. Would it be easier to react to a proposal than it would be to draft it from straw man? I think so too. We need a, it, 
if I just put out there what I have to, the, to this board, then you can react to it, update it, fix it, correct it, delete it, whatever. But you actually have a tool at least to look at, if that would be helpful. Would you, would you have time, Becky, to check in with DSPA and ask them if they have a model? I would you, could, to. you could compare their model with what you're used to working with. And I'd be happy to. That would be awesome. Yeah. Actually, I think I had a, a checked with it a while back, and they do have models on this, so I'll just pull it up and send it out. Okay. Yeah, no, that would be super helpful. Okay. There you go. Forming any committees right now. The intention yeah. is in the future we will have an evaluation committee. We're expecting on the 23rd we're going to have a rough draft of a. Or at least some. Um, something some to work with. Yeah, yeah some, some, some deeper thoughts of here. Or at least on the 23rd just decide something what you're going to do. With us. You know, yeah. Your process. So here, here, look at this. Yeah. Okay. I move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> I'll second that. Already done. Oh. Here. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.